Hello everyone, welcome back. So in our Appium series, we are going to start how to build an automation framework for the Appium with Java. So, so far we have seen uh, different Appium topics like uh, how to deal with Appium gestures, how to run the test cases into your for Android application and for iOS application, how to identify the elements by using the Appium inspector or the Appium server running it programmatically, installations, all these things, right? Now all these logics uh, we are going to implement to build an automation framework. So for this actually I have created this representation where we should list all the components of an Appium framework which we will be keeping as our reference point while building that framework. Okay, It may vary depending on how the people are skilled with and what are the different other concepts they are implementing but I am going to show about a, the core concepts of the Appium framework so that it would help you to kind of getting started with any kind of framework that you will be encounter with. Okay, so now if you see that now this is a Maven framework actually I have created I have implemented the Maven concept here so the main component of uh, of this particular framework would be Maven Azure build tool and then inside Maven we will have the dependencies as Java client for your Appium with Java and then test ng Azure core two dependencies okay now because it is a Maven we are going to divide this Maven into two different things or this folder structure one is actually source main Java and then source main test that is our the two different uh, sections we will be going to divide actually now what would the source main java will hold it it, it would hold the driver concept means the driver instantiation how the driver will be launching your android or ios simulators or the real devices all the capabilities and everything would remain inside this and then we should cater the driver object to your different other folder structures so that's where actually this driver concept would be now there would be a base package now this base package would consist of uh, different components or different files or packages that we are going to talk about now it might hold your constants and then enums like the constant would be which kind of environment you are dealing with the app username and password or maybe like the url of your appium server so all those details would remain inside this constants or in this enums okay and then it is uh, the next is coming as base test now this base test would hold uh, all the listeners like if you are familiarized with the test range listener or like the before test after test all those annotations any one of these concepts will hold or let's say that you are using cucumber as your uh, what do you call the uh, writing and running the test cases then probably it would hold all of your hooks structure here okay now test data management for sure any framework it would first hold all the test data the test data would be any kind of a file uh, handling structure right like it would hold your properties file in java or maybe json file or maybe it would a dot java file which would hold all the variables of there actually so anything that would categorize as your test data or even excel sheet as well if you are holding like multiple test data then you can have the excel sheet files as well inside this reports and logs now reports it means that you can have your earlier reporting with the appium framework or maybe you can have extend report so like uh, the initialization or maybe sending some logs attaching screenshots so all these concepts would hold inside this or maybe like generating the html report everything would hold inside this it could be a package or a dot java file as well Okay, then comes your util.java file. This is again a main component of your IPM framework and this holds the best practices of your framework designing, right? Where you need to create certain reusable components or reusable methods. Like I would say that taking a screenshot, like let's say if you have hundreds of test cases which would require creating a screenshot or generating a screenshot probably you won't write the same logic in every of your test case right so you can write it once and utilize it scrolling mechanism different types of appium gestures all those concepts we can put it inside this util.java or probably let's say waiting mechanisms your explicit weight fluent weight or maybe creating a the current date let's say that or generating a uh, a kind of a random integer or a random string 
okay so all those concepts you can put it inside this util and then the methods can be accessible across your framework okay and then comes with the app data now app data is pretty similar to the test data but i kept it as separate which would not hold your test data but rather than your app details actually like probably i would give one example like which app you want to launch the android or ios probably it would hold um, like a json file which would just consist of a uh, uh, five to ten different variables key value pair okay again this can be your properties file or it could be json file or it could be your dot java file as well you might not have a you know, like an excel sheet or csv file as your app data right so those kind of things you can keep it here and then resources folder okay now resources is again like you can uh, you can generalize actually this as well like let's say that you are using log4j okay and then you have to keep that dot xml file where which would hold all the configurations of your log4j so you can keep it inside these resources okay so all uh, even you can put the test data inside this resources folder as well even you can keep the applications as well like your uh, android application ios application those things like for android dot apk file for ios dot ipa or dot app file for your simulators and the same thing like uh, the how i have told that into the resources the same thing you can put it inside this apps also so i've created a package actually called or a folder like apps folder which would like a uh, kind of specific to the applications which it would hold either you can keep it inside this resources or you can have a separately as well inside this resources folder let's say that you have 10 different fold, uh, files you are keeping it which would not a good practice right maybe you can categorically put it if it is related to app you can create a apps folder all the applications you can keep it inside let's say excel sheet handling it need not to be like inside this stretch data or resources you can even create a new package called as a, uh, let's say test data file or excel underscore test data so these are just the different things which would hold these are not related to your actual business flow they should support your running the or creating the test cases right that's what we are talking about under the source main java and then irrespective of any application that you deal with or irrespective of any anything like your smoke sanity what kind of test you are generating this would re remain same actually whatever the uh, what you call different applications you are automating so this ci cd would hold like for an instance let's say that you are creating docker containers for your android uh, running those test cases so you can keep the docker file let's say you are running by using jenkins so you can keep it the jenkins file here the pipeline syntaxes which you are using right dot jenkins file you can keep it inside or let's say you are running the test cases by using ado pipeline so the yaml files you can keep it or if you are using github actions so that yaml file you can keep anything that is related to your devops or running into a ci cd pipeline those files you can keep it here so again it it need not to be inside the ci cd you can keep it anywhere but as i told keeping a specific folder would be good for your future uh, what you call maintenance actually when it is scaling too much it would be good actually for easily identifying which folder i need to go and then do some changes okay so this is all about your framework based component actually which would make your platform of your framework now let's come to the source main test actually here i just kept kept it this session bit towards here because it is not fitting to this but then the source main test will hold here actually source main java and then bottom source main test so this particular location and this location is parallel to each other and these are all like the ch uh, child folders actually there fine now in the source main test this actually we are keeping all the business flow okay and this is very specific to what kind of application you are you are automating actually for an instance now again i'm dividing that into two sections one is the pages and then the tests actually now what is pages so pages in the sense the each screen a simple page object model even we understood this logic while understanding the selenium or probably any kind of uh, uh, what do you call automation tool you are using the page object model is very uh, generic and then very 
very useful pattern actually everybody is using that term or maybe like recently uh, the screenplay pattern actually become popular so you can keep it anything that is related to your application flow you can keep it inside these pages now let's talk about this a little bit about more like base page what would hold about the base page now this is the generalized what you call methods of your screens actually for an instance let's say there is a navigation bar that navigation bar you are using for every screen so those kind of logics you can keep it for an instance you are going from one screen to another now those navigations you can keep it here right or let's say even the scrolling mechanism let's say it is very specific to your application only so all those base functions base features of your application which is very generic to all of your screens you can keep it here so even the actions actually the browser element actions like uh, you have click you have a wait for element uh, and then uh, getting the size of your element so all those logics you can keep it into the base page actually here you can keep it into the util or into the base page also i would suggest the page related actions we can keep it here a kind of extension to this util.java can stay into the base page but it would mostly hold to your page related actions okay now here because we are talking about appium right which would uh, will be helpful to automate the android and ios now if you see that bottom to that i have the android and ios what is this android and ios two different packages i am creating actually here now because appium we are using mostly to automate the android and ios platforms right i created two different packages now there are different people have different kind of understanding or suggestions like some people say that okay no because android and ios in reality it's not 100% same actually the way they have implemented it some or other things at least like minimum of 20 to 25 percent of the functionality or the way navigations the user journey will be little bit different even the locators also will be different so it would be good practice to keep it into two separate packages so these android and ios will hold all the page object concepts inside their own packages means let's say that i have a application which is uh, 10 different screens are there now i will be creating 10 different dot java files based on the page object okay inside this android so all the android related page screen objects and their actions will be re remaining inside this android the same thing ios would hold all the ios related page objects and their actions now some people say that no it would be tedious to kind of maintain two different things i can have one particular page object only and then you can base page and after that you can say android underscore ios so there you need to use the page object concept actually there so, sorry the page factory concept at the red find by concept you need to use it but there you need to make sure that the the locators may be different but the flow has to be exactly same okay so that's why they say that you can maintain different uh, uh, what you call package for android and ios both but it depends on how you want to really take it further actually there I, even i'm not much uh, what do you call a kind of a fan of the page factory pattern so that's why i always look for the by locators that's why i've created two different packages here now when i'm creating two different packages so my understanding is that the user journey also will be different and somewhere i'm trying to make sure that the test cases also will be different there because if i'm making two different page objects one particular set of test cases will not hold because one test case might not pull the data from android and then when you are running into the ios it will pull the classes or methods from this ios that will not be the case actually there so if you are separating it android and ios separate page objects you need to create two different packages for your test folder also so android would hold all the android related test scenarios ios will have their own separate test scenarios the only thing is that see it is one of the simplest way to prepare the appium framework actually but there is only drawback is that you have to maintain two different uh, what you call set of android and ios separately now this is all about your source main test 
Now let's talk about couple of other folders or the packages. One is screenshots. Now for sure, if I have a report which would attach certain screenshots, let's say your test case is failing. Now at that moment, you need to attach a screenshot. So first you need to create a screenshot and then take that screenshot to attach into your HTML report, right? So that's where actually I'm keeping a screenshots as a separate folder so that all the screenshots that you are capturing for that execution session, you will be keeping under that. Okay, even you can create screenshots under that you can create Android and iOS separate directories and then you can keep their specific screenshots and while attaching, you can give the path of these screenshots so that your folder structure will not be complicated. Like if I'm not keeping a screenshots directory, then it would like your folder structure will be huge because it would add a number of screenshots as a flat list file only. Okay. Now let's talk about the runners. What is runners actually here? Now different people have different name convention. I'm keeping this runners. I will give you an example. Let's say I'm using the code test ng concept. Now in test ng, I will have a different test ng dot XML files, right? Maybe I want to keep one as a smoke test, another for sanity, another for specific to the Android, another for iOS specific. So all these test ng XMLs, you can keep it inside if you are running from testng.xml. The same thing, let's say that you are using Cucumber. So Cucumber will have a test runner files. Now different people, I have seen couple of frameworks where people keep test runner files also multiple test runners. For smoke, they will create one test runner file. For sanity, they will create another sanity related test runners where they would give the categories or the tags inside the test runner file. So all those multiple test runner files, you can keep it inside this. Okay, fine. Now let's talk about the pom.xml, which we know all that pom.xml is one of the Maven's core concept where it would hold all the dependencies and the plugins actually there. So that's why we need to keep it there. So I think that's pretty much the basic concept about the Appium framework. If somebody is asking about give the tree structure or folder structure, then you can explain the entire framework in a stretch about these are the folder structures. But as I told at the beginning, this might vary depending on how the framework is designed and based on your experience and your gaining new concepts, you can change it by kind of learning these concepts, then you would be the person to have a best decision that how do you segregate or separate these, uh, what do you call components into different packages or directories. Okay. So hope this particular session will be helpful for you to kind of understand the framework and this would kind of applicable not just for Appium, but for your like a Selenium for your web application or maybe Playwright, WebDriver IO or any kind of tool, web to automation tool that you are using uh, here and there, but mostly it would consist of all these components. So in our next sessions, we will be seeing actually how to build the Appium framework from scratch and we will be using the latest Appium server that is Appium 2.x and the latest Appium Java client so that we would leverage all the new features that the Appium team have introduced. So like this, we will be seeing some more interesting topics about this framework designing. So stay tuned and do subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.